In order to live an extraordinary and abundant life, you must focus on your internal battle and win within. My name is Randy Wilson, and welcome to the Rich Mind Podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Rich Mind Podcast. And today, super excited about bringing this guest to you today. We were just having a conversation before we hopped on and hit record here. And I just know that the conversation we're about ready to have with Lucy Potesnik is going to be fantastic. She's a, a fantastic person. She's got so much wisdom to share. And as I mentioned, just the conversations we were having before we hopped on and hit record here, I just know that this is going to be super fun. So a little bit about Lucy. She's a peak performance coach. She's a national speaker. And she helps people rewire the subconscious mind to take massive action towards their goals. She challenges her students to step outside their comfort zone and become the best versions of themselves mentally, physically, financially, and spiritually. And just that alone is super cool. I can't wait to dive into a little bit more of those bullet points and that type of thing. But without further ado, let's, uh, let's bring Lucy onto the show and let's have a conversation. Well, Lucy, welcome. Thank you, Randy. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited and grateful to be here. Just checking out um, your podcast and your your uh, Instagram before I was getting so hyped up because I'm like, oh my gosh! I'm like, he gets it. He understands. We have like the same the same uh, vision or the same mission to essentially empower and inspire the world, open them up to step into their greatness. I agree. Yeah. I was having a conversation with my wife and I mentioned this to her earlier. I was having a conversation with her earlier and she's like, you know, how are you going to be with this, this interview? You think this is going to go well? And I was like, yeah, I, I have a feeling just based on what I've done the research so far that, yeah, this is going to be a fantastic conversation, which I'm super, super excited about. So take a few minutes and I kind of went through a little bit of the bullet point list, right? I don't usually don't get into a lot of the detail with the intro of the guest, but I always want to open up the floor and give you a chance to Tell everybody a little bit about yourself, where you're from, what you, what you're doing, what, where you are, you know, all of the, all the stuff, go a little bit more detail for us. Yeah. So I would be happy to share a little bit about my, my history or my past and kind of everything that I've learned that's brought me to this point today. So just like Dr. Wayne Dyer says, I believe that we're not human beings having a spiritual experience. We're spiritual beings having a human experience. And that's why it's so fun getting on these podcasts because every single one of us has a unique journey and our journey is what is going to help us evolve and grow into the persons that, into the people that we were designed or meant to be. And if you live with, with your mind and your heart open, open to learning and open to growth, there are these divine universal truths that will stumble across and they can be presented as a difficulty or an obstacle. But once we move through them, we grow and we become who we were meant to be. So I think that everyone's journey is unique and I'm excited to share how my journey led me to where I'm at now. So I grew up just outside of Detroit and I like to say that I was a little girl with a big dream. I was obsessed with horses ever since I can remember. All I would do is, is, is to talk about and dream about and just breathe horses. So naturally, I would beg my dad every single day, dad, please, please buy me a horse. And being that my family, my, my parents were blue collar workers, my mom had two factory jobs, horses were definitely outside of the realm of possibilities. Um, but I never gave up on my dream. I never stopped believing what was possible. And so what I would do, it's funny, I would actually pray at night and say, like, dear God, please let me just dream that I'm riding a horse in my dreams so that way it actually feels like I'm doing it in real life. And I can't tell you how many times I'd be dreaming, my left foot's going in the stirrup, and as I'm throwing my right leg over the saddle, poof, I'd wake up and I'd be like, oh my God, I was so close. So I decided that I had to take matters in my own hands. So the day that I turned 16 was the same day that I got my driver's license and the same day that I put my Craigslist ad online where I said, I will ride your horse for free. Well, naturally, all of these yahoos called me with their unbroke, green broke horses. So green broke meaning like basically wild that hadn't been ridden or touched in five to 10 years. And I'm like feeling full of freedom and confidence, driving all over God's country, just happy to sit on a horse. Next thing you know, I'm riding these people's horses, getting bucked off right and left, 
getting flipped over on, just eating dirt. And so, um, <laughs> but I like to say it's it's very similar to when life throws you curveballs. What do you do? You don't let that stop you. You get back on the horse. And no matter how many times that I I got thrown off or ate dirt. I was just the happiest thing to crawl right back up and give it another try. So it was always like a a failing forward. You learn from, you live and you learn, you live from your experience, you learn from your experiences and you just never give up. So I always had this relentless drive to follow my passion. And so um, sure enough, fast forward, I was able to I was blessed to be able to to grow and scale a seven figure business where I now buy, train, and sell horses all over the country. And I even um, <laughs> I accidentally opened up one of Michigan's largest public trail riding companies simply because I love trail riding and it was one of my favorite things. And I wanted to share that gift. I wanted to share that gift with with the world. And sure enough, um, it was a hit. And uh, I like to say like everything that's happened has kind of unfolded very naturally or very organically. And I'm not here to say, oh, hey, look at me, look at me. I'm more here saying I was, I was, if you're blessed to be a blessing and I feel like I have been blessed. So therefore I'm on a mission to give back and to serve. And if I can transfer the knowledge that I've learned on my journey, the, 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 everything from from quantum physics to leveraging the laws of the universe to intention setting, the power of awareness. If I used those things to take me from where I was at to where I am now, I love teaching people how they too can really understand and embrace these laws so that way they can start implementing them today and start experience the freedom and abundance that they deserve tomorrow. That's fantastic. So going back into that little bit of a story with, with the horses, when you were 16 and you were getting thrown off of them, I'm, I'm trying to envision you as a little girl, right? Riding this huge animal. What gave you the drive to keep getting back up? Were you encouraged to keep getting back on or was that more of a, just an instinct that you had to do that? To, tell me more about that. That was, that was an interesting part of your story. I, I would say... I would say that it was, it was almost like innate in me. Like when I got thrown off, like I would almost get mad and I would be like, how dare you? And so <laughs> then I don't know, for some reason, I just didn't have fear associated with the horses. And it was always, there was way more reward and more passion and more like love and excitement associated with it. And even though like, I, I thank you, Jesus. I never got seriously hurt or injured, which is a is, which is a miracle in and of itself. Considering that at this point, I've ridden well like thousands of horses. That and when I get these horses in, I don't get a backstory. I don't get a resume. I don't know like oh this horse you know had this owner and showed this and did four H. No, like I don't know if it's even broke. So when I'm crawling up on these horses, I never know what to expect. Um, but I've been uh, I've been very fortunate in being able to follow my instincts and read the energy and kind of know what to expect based on their, their, their body language and movement. Um, so I know it was just, it was born within me that you just, you don't stop. You keep going. Well, part of the discussion today we're going to have is about energy, right? And how the, the transfer of energy from uh, whether it's a human being to human being or, or to another animal or something like that, that was kind of my sense then too, is that you coming back with the, like I said, the not aggressive part, but then the ability to step into the fact of letting that horse know that it was okay. It was fine. Right. You probably didn't even realize it at the time, but you were probably making it feel in the moment even better. Right. As far as you were taking action, taking some control over its chaos, right. Not realizing what was going on in its own world in its own right. Uh, You might've been doing that by accident, but at the same time, as we've learned through the uh, like you said, the laws of the uniform, universe and things like that with the energy transfer of folks and, and things like that. It's uh, definitely, you could tell it was picked up by those horses, which then allowed you to be able to take care of them in a, in a fantastic way. That's kind of what I'm hearing. Yeah. And the interesting thing, Randy, is that what a lot of people might not realize is that horses are herd animals. And so what that means is they have a hierarchy. And so they have like the alphas or the dominant horses, then they have the middle of the pack horses, and then you have like the lower pecking horses. Um, And so what that means is that when they view us, they view us just as another 
a horse or another herd animal. And so they're constantly questioning, oh, is this going to be an assertive, is this going to be an assertive human or is this going to be a pushover human? Do I have to listen to them? So working with horses is actually a great opportunity for us to learn different leadership skills. Because when we're working with and handling horses, whether it's on the ground or from their back, we have to show up as a confident leader because they are like, we're all energetic beings, but they're very in tuned to the energy that we're emitting. So if we show up with a calm, confident energy, just like when we show up with, if we have like a team of employees, the, our team of employees are going to be able to read and feel that energy. Energy is contagious. And so the energy that we admit is the, is the energy that we're also going to attract back to us. So it's, it's really important to become innately aware of how you're reacting and how you're responding to the different circumstances that life is going to throw at you. Sometimes we're going to be confronted with diff- difficult circumstances and situations Life is 10% of what happens to us and 90% of how we respond. So whether you get thrown off a horse or whether you're going through a divorce or whether you get into a car accident or whether you have some sort of difficulty at work, like whatever happens, your power lies in the dear present moment. How you think, how you feel, and how you decide to respond is going to shape the outcome of whatever is about to unfold. So that's why awareness, emotional intelligence is so fundamentally important when we're talking about success in any area of your life. Love that. So let me put in my mind, let me put a pin in something you said that I want to come back to the awareness piece. But the first part I want to go to is the, the difference or the difference between reacting and responding. That was something that I was taught and that I've discovered and how I know those sound similar, right? And I've had conversations with the folks and they're like, well, what's, what's the difference, right? And I've gone through the journey of trying to discover what exactly the difference is between reacting and responding. I have my own opinion, but I'm curious of what that means to you, the difference between those two words, reacting and responding. Oh my gosh, Randy, I absolutely love this question. So this is one of like the primary things that we teach is reacting, so many of us are living with unconscious patterns. If you take a step back and look at our life, our lives are nothing more than a sequence of patterns on repeat. We are by nature creatures of habit and we have, and we fall into patterns, patterns of focus, patterns of language, patterns of physiology, how we're moving, how we're thinking, what we're doing. We do the same morning routine over and over again, We wake up, we brush our teeth, we change our clothes, we do, we take a shower, makeup, car, cube, whatever, drive home. And so we fall into these patterns and these patterns will condition us. And so when things arise, something when unexpected circumstances show up or when the pressure is applied, whatever is inside of us is what is going to show up. So I love when Dr. Wayne Dyer talks about the orange. He says, if you take an orange and you squeeze an orange, what's going to come out? Apple juice? No, of course not, because the orange doesn't carry any apple juice inside of it. If you squeeze an orange, orange juice is going to come out. So what's going to happen when life puts pressure on you? When life squeezes you, when when difficult circumstance arises, what is going to come out of you? How are you going to react? You're going to react with what's inside of you. Now, is that going to be anger? Is that going to be fear? Is that going to be aggression or animosity? Or is it going to be grace? Is it going to be love? Is it going to be understanding? Is it going to be wisdom? So therefore, we need to take an inventory of the thoughts that we're thinking, the emotions that we, that we contain within us, whether they're bottled up emotions or not, whether they're expressed or suppressed, we need to really become aware of that. So that way we're not reacting with unconscious patterns. Therefore, we can live more consciously, more in alignment, and therefore respond higher frequency responses. Like I said, like grace, love, understanding. Love that. So then that t- kicks me in then to the question about awareness. So that's been my experience as well, is that when you become aware of the difference between reacting and responding, it requires an ability to become aware 
of of the moment basically right the feelings the emotions that are going on inside of you whether your mind's racing your heart could be racing your your temperature could be rising all of those emotional physical energy type things are going on which then will engage you to react or potentially react but then having the ability to take control become aware to then respond instead are you catching where I'm where I'm going with that there so do you have any any way to verbalize? Uh, I kind of did, did that in a little bit of a nutshell there. I mean, I, as far as like, I go a little bit deeper into some of my other episodes as far as how I do it, but do you have a, a way of becoming aware of, a, of an event or an activity that's, that's triggering you that you have the ability to, to make the choice, right? You're either going to react or you're going to respond. Do you have the, any ideas of like becoming aware of, of your emotions? Yeah, at that so moment? I, I knew I, I knew I was going to love this conversation. Um, so that's exactly what we teach our different tools and techniques to become aware. Because just like you said, when you shine the light of awareness on these unconscious patterns that are running your life, they no longer have power over you. They lose control over you. And that's when you're able to take back your power, to take back control of your life. So my favorite thing is probably meditation. So the actual definition of meditation means to become aware of oneself. So when we're, so I started meditating when I was 22 years old. I had originally, I had attended this Abraham Hicks workshop and I had never meditated before. I'd kind of heard of it. And I show up to this workshop and they're like, if there's one thing that we can recommend all every, every single person do that's going to dramatically increase the quality of their life, it's going to be to take 10 minutes every single morning and gift yourself that time to meditate. And I didn't really understand it and I didn't know it. I'm kind of like, okay, well, I've never meditated before. How do I quiet my mind? What does this look like? How is this supposed to feel? Am I even doing this right? Well, I ever since I started meditating, my it, it has just up leveled every area of my life because what meditating is it like I said it means to become aware of yourself to become familiar with the thoughts that you're thinking and the feelings that you're feeling and to understand like wait a second I'm angry I'm I'm, I'm operating out of alignment why why am I feeling angry what is it that happened what did somebody say or what did somebody do that caused me to operate out of alignment that threw me outside of my my happy bubble if you will and so then if you're able to identify you're like oh wow this person said this then you can essentially be like well wait a second i don't want to feel angry i don't want to feel mad i don't want to be upset right now this doesn't feel good well guess what happiness is a choice and so a perfect example of this is I remember I was at I was I was at an ex boyfriend's house and he had horses and I was working one of his horses and I don't remember what had happened exactly I don't remember what we were talking about because it was many years ago but all of a sudden he started telling me something and I remember losing my cool and I remember getting so upset and so angry and it was it was like the first couple months that I started meditating and then I started yelling at him. And then all of a sudden, like in the moment that I raised my voice and I started yelling at him, that's when it clicked. And all of a sudden I realized like, wait a second, I don't want to be angry. I don't want to be cussing. Like, this is not how I want to show up. And then I realized, and then like, I like, I sat back and it was almost like, it was almost like when you're in a movie and it's like, you like cut the film and you were like, you're in backstage and you're like, wait a second, I'm being you, it, meditation allows you to become the observer of your thoughts and the observer of your emotions. So in that moment, I realized that I was showing up out of alignment and, and operating in, in anger and frustration and hate. And I'm like, who am I? Why am I allowing, why am I giving my power away and allowing what somebody else is saying to, to move me away from my happiness? So in that moment, I was like, I, I was in that moment, I was able to take back my power and say, listen, we're, we don't have the same ideas or beliefs and that's okay, but um, I choose to be unconditionally happy. So no matter what you say is not going to, to rock me, if you will. So that's why 
meditation is so incredibly powerful because what it does is you're intentionally raising your vibration. You're letting go, you're quieting your mind and you're letting go of all of all of the worry, all of the doubts, all of the limiting beliefs, all of the fear, everything that's weighing you down essentially. If we know that we think approximately 60 to 70,000 thoughts a day and that 90% of those thoughts are usually negative, it's about really hearing that that voice in our head and being able to quiet it. And all change is preceded by awareness. So if we're unaware that that of what that voice is even saying, or like if we if we just think, if we just take it for granted that that little voice in our head is constantly tearing us down, constantly telling us that we're not good enough, that we're not worthy, that we failed before, why would we even try again? What's the point? What are the other people gonna say? What are they gonna think about us? If we can recognize that we can quiet that voice and we can shut it off or we can change it and we can start saying empowering things to ourselves, it's a game changer. And meditation essentially allows us, it's a practice. The practice of meditation is allowing us to become aware of when a thought flows in and then recognizing that a thought's in and then lovingly release it. So many people are like, I can't meditate. I can't meditate. I can't turn my mind off. I can't turn my mind off. That's good. That means that your mind's working exactly the way it's supposed to. You're not supposed to just completely shut your mind off. It's all about recognizing the thought when it comes in and then lovingly release it and return back to your breath. So it's a practice and uh, it's all about awareness. So that's probably one of my my most exciting things I like to teach people is all about meditation. I love that. So the word that's coming to my mind, and I think I've heard you say it before, was control. Once you get that awareness, it allows you to have control of these thoughts. So it's your subconscious mind bubbling to the top, right? Trying to, the monkey mind, trying to get you going crazy and chaos, reacting versus responding. And that meditation piece just quiets and it gives you the ability to take a little bit of control over the chaos. That's kind of how I try to envision in my own mind. Would you kind of agree with that assessment? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we live in a world full of, of, of distractions with our phones and, and negativity on the news. And we're essentially conditioned human beings, right? Our minds are conditioned based on what we've experienced in our past, through our parents, any sort of traumas that we've lived through or experienced. So we're, we're all conditioned with different beliefs or, or paradigms. And it's truly understanding, it's breaking the pattern of, wait, I am, I'm not my thoughts. A thought is nothing, or I'm sorry, a belief is nothing more than a thought that we keep thinking. And we have these like built in belief systems and and we fight for our limitations and we fight for like, oh, well, I'm not good enough. And I have failed in the past and blah, blah, blah. If you fight for your limitations, then you're going to keep them. However, when you start to question everything and you're able to recognize a thought when it comes in and then question the integrity and the authenticity of that thought. Where did that thought come from? Is that my thought? Is that even true? And then you can begin to change the story or change the narrative. That's when that's when the good stuff happens. Agreed. Because that's been, I say this all the time on the podcast. So folks, if you hear me say this, I'm going to say it a thousand more times. You've heard me already say it a thousand times that it's the hardest work I've ever done in my entire life was to shine the light on me, right? Focus on me and my internal dialogue and becoming aware, catching myself in the moments of reacting versus responding. Uh, We were talking a little bit and and those that listen and follow the podcast and know that I've got a little grandson that's six months old and I care for him a lot. And years ago, I would not even have been in the right place to even handle the chaos of an infant. But I've gotten my, I'm using him almost like practice. Like you said, your meditation is practice, right? I'm using it as practice even on myself sometimes when he's fussy or when he's whatever the situation is at that moment, controlling my thoughts, not allowing it to control me in that moment allows me then to be more present and, and better with him. That's just an example for myself. I try to do that obviously in all areas of my life as well, but I love it how you're making and bringing home the point that the awareness piece is super, super powerful to the point where when you, when you 
once you realize it or, or experience it for like the first time, maybe the 10th time, and you're like, wow, that, I mean, it really, it really, really works, which is fascinating, which is what keeps me going freeing. down and having these conversations. It's, yeah, absolutely. It's 100% freeing, which is super cool. So I appreciate you going down that road. So let's pivot into the, the meditation piece. Let's, so let's say I've got my own things that I do for myself. I might not doing it like you or like everybody else, right? I don't think there's a one size fits all to quote unquote meditation or, or quieting the mind and trying to get in control and have the awareness. But I'm just curious, what is your practice or what do you recommend to folks that if they are at the very beginning stages of realizing, okay, I need to take some action. I need to get some things in, under control in my own life, but I have nowhere, I have no idea where to begin. I don't know what, like you said, folks was like, I can't get my mind to shut up, quiet down, <laughs> none of it, right? I've heard that as well. Are there, any, are there any basics, anything that you recommend to get folks started on that process? Okay, this is such a great question. Yes, okay, so many, so many things. <laughs> Where do I start? Okay, um, first of all, let me say that there's so many different kinds of meditation. I mean, there's, there's guided meditation, there's mantra meditation, where you have like the um and the ah, then you have breath work meditation, then you have abundance meditation, and I think I already said gratitude meditation, or you might have a healing meditation, you may have a chakra alignment, med- there's all sorts of different meditations that you can do. But essentially, the name of the game is just granting or gifting yourself those 10 to 15 minutes of of quieted, peaceful time. God speaks in the silence. That's why it's like we have to we have to look inward for his guidance because all of the answers, everything that we need is within us. And sometimes the outside world can be so distracting and chaotic that we forget that we can look inside of us for that internal peace and that wisdom and that truth and that knowing that we are exactly where we're supposed to be and that everything is unfolding perfectly. So with that being said, the first thing I would recommend everybody to do, set your alarms 15 minutes early. Just set your alarm 15 minutes early. Wake up 15 minutes earlier than you know. If you're normally waking up at seven, wake up at 645. I know you don't want to, but do it anyways, okay? On the other side of I don't feel like it, on the other side of like it's cold outside or I don't want to go to the gym or I'm tired or on the other side of your excuses lies greatness, lies unprecedented success. So stop making excuses and start implementing the things that the most successful people in the world are telling you and teaching you to do. And I'm not saying this because I'm saying, I'm not, I'm not telling you to do it because I'm saying it. I'm just sharing it because I've listened to the mentors and I've implemented it and I've experienced my life change in, in beautiful ways because of it. So um, set, your, set your alarms 15 minutes early and then there's whatever mindfulness looks like to you. You can, I mean, the easiest thing in my opinion is to go to YouTube And there's all sorts of different guided meditations. I feel like the guided meditations on YouTube are probably one of the easiest starting points just because our mind is naturally going to go here and go there and thoughts are going to creep their way in as they do. That's, that's what, that's the nature of them. But it's again in the recognition of, oh, a thought came in. And instead of a lot, instead of going down that rabbit hole of like, oh, I got to call the doctor's appointment. Oh, and after the doctor's appointment, I got to pick up my kid and we got to go grocery shopping because he has that project. And I got to pick up this from the grocery store for his project. And oh, the dog has the vet appointment too and blah, 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 blah. And so before you like run down that rabbit hole, even if you already have gone down that rabbit hole, that's okay too. But it's simply the, the recognition of, oh, wait, I'm in a rabbit hole of thought. I don't want to think, I'm I'm trying not to think those thoughts. That is the, that's where the beauty and the growth comes from because then you're like, oh wait, let me put those thoughts away. And then you realize that you are in control of your thoughts and that's where your power stems. So every, and, and so there's all sorts of different meditations and I encourage people to try all sorts of, all sorts of the different ones. I have, um, I have a, a whole arsenal of different meditations, that a list that I've um, 
that I've compiled throughout the years. So now if I have like, I have like a productive morning meditation. So if I know I have like a packed day, I'll do like my 10 minute productive morning. And it like talks about like divine timing and how like I move through the day with ease and flow and everything that crosses my path satisfies and delights me. And all. so anyways, you get the point. But the other thing that I would also uh, like to mention is that, so for me, like, morning routines are absolutely like just paramount. They're paramount in any sort of success because if you can control your mornings, you can control the rest of the day. And if you can control your days, that means you can control your weeks, your months, your years, your life. So it all starts with you. It all starts with change. It all starts with when you open your eyes in the morning, what are you doing? And when I open my eyes in the morning, the first thing I do is thank you God for waking. Thank you. Thank you God for this morning. Please use me and allow me to serve, serve the masses. Next thing, I meditate. That's my non-negotiable. Every single morning, I med- before I even get out of bed. And so I decided that if, if I know that meditation has elevated every area of my life to unprecedented heights, then I, and, and I, I, I encourage everybody to do this. How can I share this? How can I be more intentional with sharing this? Well, we've created a Facebook group called Transformation Nation. And every single Friday at 1030 a.m. Eastern time, I go live and I do what we call, it's called a prayer of gratitude or a rampage appreciation, essentially a gratitude meditation. And the group is free and I encourage as many people to join because if you don't know where to start, um, I know like, even, like, so today's Friday and just before we got on this call, I did my gratitude meditation and it's like, it just warms my heart. People are like, Lucy, I'm having a rough day. Like I'm so, ex- I'm looking forward to the gratitude meditation because it uplifts you. It puts you in a better state of mind. It's intentionally elevating your vibration because let me remind you that we live in a vibrational universe where all things move and all things vibrate and you don't attract what you want. You attract what you are. So if you want love, if you want more love, you have to be more love and give more love. If you pour out gratitude, the universe is going to give you more things to be grateful for. If you want more money, if you have to embody the energy of abundance and you have to be more generous, what would a wealthy person do? They would give more. They would contribute more. So you have to step into the energy of whatever it is that you want to create or attract. And I believe that... Um, I believe that if you're blessed to be a blessing. And so that's why every Friday at 1030 inside of Transformation Nation, um, I help people kickstart their meditation journeys. So if anybody is listening and would like to join me there, I would be more than happy to uh, to help them along the way. And we'll make sure to link up to that in the show notes as well. So folks, if you're listening to that and that sounds something like you're interested in, yes, we will absolutely have links for you to go find the Transformation Nation and that's, that's super cool. So I appreciate you uh, explaining that. So that leads me into the next piece that I want to take you down, a little bit of a rabbit trail. And that's called, and now we're going to talk about intentions and being intentional with our thoughts and with our, yeah, let's, let's go there. I just, I, I love this conversation so far. It's almost like, yeah, we're, this is a lot of fun. So uh, yeah, you just have those conversations sometimes and you just really connect with someone. And this is one of those for me. So you've, You've gone through awareness. We've talked a little bit about meditation and given some folks some ideas with that. But let's talk about being intentional with those thoughts, with those uh, decisions to respond versus react and how that can impact their life. Can you can you share with us a little bit about that? Yeah, so I absolutely love intention so much. Um, intention is something that is is so powerful and it's a tool that we all have access to, but so many of us choose to use it just like our imagination. Like when we're little, they tell you, use your imagination and dream big. You can be an astronaut or a pilot or a firefighter. And then it's like, as soon as you graduate high school, it's like, get a job, be realistic, get real. And it's so funny because like reality is what you make it, right? Reality is so malleable. It's pliable. It's suggestible. And like every moment is a manifested miracle. Our thoughts create our reality. And so therefore, if you want a better life, think better thoughts. How do you think better thoughts? You have to become aware of your thoughts. And then when you're aware of your thoughts, you can start deliberately intention setting. 
So intention setting is one of my favorite things to talk about because you're essentially, I like to say it almost like you're putting your order in with the universe. Um, and it's crazy because a lot of people will think that like, okay, well, this sounds like a little, little woo woo, a little hocus pocus pie in the sky, but, um, no, my gosh, it's so, it's so real. And it's so powerful. When I was, I used, after I graduated college, I got scooped up into the corporate world and I was uh, doing Excel spreadsheets inside of the cube. And I had like the world's most negative, miserable person, like most pessimistic boss you could ever imagine. And we'd have to travel to different cities around the country um, to see the different like fact, like, um, factories or whatever. And uh, <laughs> you could tell how much I love that job. <laughs> and so <laughs> anyways, so we, were, um, we were traveling and I'm not even kidding you, Randy. He would list out every single possible thing that could go wrong. And I'm like, dear Justin, like, please, like, don't you realize that in where your focus goes, your energy flows. So when you're calling out and you're every single thing that could go wrong, you're calling those things into your experience. So, so many people are, are well-versed and well-practiced in, in focusing on what they don't want and intention setting the wrong way. But what I like to teach people is how to use your imagination. What if instead of what could go wrong, what could go right? We live in, in, in a rich universe full of infinite supply and, and abundance. So in, in, in a world where you can be, do, have anything you want, why don't we start asking like what could go right? And so intention setting is just that, using your imagination to think of all of the possibilities even as, as crazy or as wild or as outlandish as they might be. And then um, I teach my students different strategies or techniques. Um, one of them is monthly intentions. And so every month, what I do is I write out my monthly intentions. So for example, if you're writing out your April intentions, on April 1st, I'll go ahead and write out Today is Tuesday, April 30th, and I'm so happy, grateful, blessed, whatever adjective you want, excited, thrilled, whatever you want to say, because I've lost the seven pounds that I wanted to lose this month, or because I've hired three rock star employees, or because I've really made a decision and committed to healthy eating and working out three days a week. I'm so, and so whatever it could be, whatever it is that you want to create or attract, or it could be because I've attracted 10 new soulmate clients that are the perfect fit for me, or it could be any, whether you're, anybody can use this, whether you're a stay at home mom, whether you're an entrepreneur, whether you're working, um, you're working with a boss, or if you have a team of employees, whatever it is that you want to create, you write your intentions as if you've already attracted or created them and you talk about how grateful and how excited you are and what the next step is for example when so after I quit my corporate job and I after I quit my corporate job to follow my to pursue my passion of horses and sell horses full-time um you see horses are seasonal so winters slow down and when winters slow down <laughs> You don't make as much money. So I decided that I wanted to get into real estate investing. And so when I started real estate investing, that's when, again, I started using my intention setting and it was like dream big because whatever you write down, I like to call like the magic of the pen. When you're journaling these things, I remember I wrote down, okay, this year I'm going to buy my third rental property. Cause I think it was 2015. I bought my first rental property, 2016. I bought my second rental property. And then 2017, I'm like, okay, like I'm going to buy my third rental property. Yay. Well, I had attended a conference and they're like dream big. And I'm like, okay, so I guess I'll buy three rental properties this year. And I, I didn't even know how it was going to happen, but I wrote it down anyways, because why not? Like worst case scenario, I only buy one. Worst case scenario, I only buy two. Maybe I hit three. Anyways, long story short, August comes around. I'm like, hey, universe, you know, time's, time, clock is ticking. Uh, I haven't, still haven't bought a property yet. And next thing you know, I went to a, a real estate investing meetup in August, September, and October, I closed on a house each and every single month. And it was crazy how, again, 
when you ask, it is given. All of the cooperative components of the universe will collaborate on your behalf. All you have to do is ask, believe that you're worth it, and then step into the receiving mode. And it sounds like hocus pocus, but I'm living proof that this stuff absolutely works. As I am as well. And that's why, so just to go back to the awareness piece, I think that if folks can re-listen to that part of the conversation, because to me, that's where it all stems from, that if when you become aware of your thoughts, you can become aware of different ideas, different opportunities. So I would assume, talking about that real estate opportunity, if you had been in a more negative state of mind, or if you weren't necessarily doing the intentions like you were doing, you would not have seen the opportunity because it just would have passed you by. I think, and a I feel, thousand percent. yeah, I think and feel that a lot of people are seeing or they have opportunities in their awareness, but they're not aware of them. And so they can't see nor take advantage of them. Would, would you agree with that? Uh, yes, a thousand percent. So we have, okay, so we have, we have this 16 week program that reprograms your subconscious mind and transforms your identity so that you can start taking massive action towards your goals. And it's, th- it's based on three, uh, three pillars. And so the first one is energetics talking about essentially we live in a vibrational universe and that you don't attract what you want. You attract what you are and it's all energy and that you have the power to control the state that you want to show up in. And so we'll let me talk about what is a, um, a peak emotional state. Well, when you're in a peak emotional state, you're going to be, when was the last time you felt alive and passionate and unstoppable? When you felt on fire, like you could hurdle over any obstacle that was presented towards you. And then it's like, okay, well, how many hours a day are you operating in that state? How many hours a week? How many hours a month are you operating in that state? Because you are going to make drastically different decisions when you're operating in a peak state versus when you're operating full of fear or lack or depression. And so therefore, if we know, if we know that decision is what creates our destiny and the one thing that's going to influence our decision is our state, the most successful people will attest to the fact that if you can control your state, you can control your destiny. So yes, we're going to make direct drastically different decisions when we're in a peak state. So that's why I teach people how to access these peak states and how to maintain them. And then the second pillar is just what you said, is desire, getting absolute clarity around what you want. And I help people craft a vision because so many people, if you ask them what they want, if you had all the resources in the world and you could have anything, your life could look any way that you wanted it, how would it look? The first thing people do is, well, I wouldn't want this and I wouldn't want this and I don't want this. And they automatically go to the negative. And it's like, again, where your focus goes, your energy flows. And what you're focused on, you're creating, you're attracting. So we're conditioned as a society to focus on the bad. Well, switch that and let's focus on the good. I help people create a vision. And what they do, it's got five areas of their life, which is health and fitness, relationships, which can be with a spouse, with a coworker, with your children, with your parents. The next is finances. So it can be like, whether it's a career Um, a side hustle, investing, or crypto. The fourth is lifestyle because lifestyle is, your life is supposed to be lived and life is supposed to be fun, cherished. And then the fifth is spirituality or growth, your soul's evolution, self-development. Because when you start really diving into spirituality and self-development, every other area of your life is going to flourish. And the importance of having this vision And knowing with absolute clarity what you want is because once you have it and it's written down and you're reading it every single day or at least every single week, what you're doing is you're activating your reticular activating system, which is kind of what you were just talking about, which is when, let's say, if I ask you, oh, I'm going to drive home for, I'm going to drive home today. How many red cars did you say? You're going to be like, I don't know. I wasn't really paying attention. I wasn't looking for any red cars. Well, if I ask you tomorrow, okay, let me know how many red cars you see. Oh, well, I saw 27 because I was paying attention. Same thing if you buy a Tesla. You buy a Tesla and then all of a sudden you start seeing Teslas everywhere and you're like, I swear there've never been so many Teslas now. It's because you're, you're, you've activated your reticular activating system and it's now in your subconscious. So same thing goes when you have a vision and you're reading it every single week or every single, yeah, every single day or every single week, then all of a sudden 
you are embedding these images into your subconscious mind. So therefore, when preparation meets opportunity and these doors begin to open and these opportunities present themselves, you see them and you jump on them and you make the decision and you take action. And that's the difference is being ready to receive, being open to receive and essentially seeing these opportunities because they're all around us, but sometimes we're blind to them because we're focused on the wrong things. Absolutely. So the one thing you, you triggered a thought in my mind just when you said, so I don't know if you're familiar with this saying or not from Earl Nightingale. I mentioned uh, to you before we hit record about how Earl's been a huge influence on my life. But he, one thing he said in Lead the Field, his program, was that luck, people are always, you know, they're lucky or this is lucky or you're lucky or I'm lucky. And he said that when luck is no more than when preparedness meets opportunity and opportunity is there all the time. And I've lived that thought and that statement and you just said it and it just, yes, 100%. Opportunities are really everywhere. But if you slow down your mind enough to become aware, challenge your stories, challenge everything that you've been taught or fed growing up. Uh, some of us have had different experiences. I don't want to act like mine's better or yours better or mine's worse. You know what I mean? We're all on this journey. But if we can learn to take control, learn some basic knowledge and wisdom, begin to apply it every day in a, in a in the smallest way. It doesn't have to be any huge earth shattering moment. It's not this one big epiphany and then poof, it's all changed. But if you can just really step into that, like you said, take massive action, take, have the courage to take action. Who knows where you'll be? And once again, I'm living proof of that. And it sounds like from what I've heard from you today and what I've learned from you and, you know, studying up on you, that that's exactly been your, your journey as well. Yes. And a, a thousand percent. It's, it's wild to think that you're only one, you're only ever one decision away from changing your entire life. Had I stayed in my corporate job, I mean, kind of like we were talking about on the phone or yeah, when we were talking about prior to the podcast, like my, my parents are old school. They're super traditional. My dad, he was like, you have, you have a cozy, com comfy corporate job, full benefits, paid salary, paid vacation. People have worked their entire lives to have what you have. And you're just going to throw it all away. And I'm like, yeah, dad, I think I have. But, and I mean, it was one of the, like, hands down, one of the scariest decisions I've ever made is walking away from that comfort. And I took a, I took a leap of faith. I took a bet on myself. And had I never made that decision, oh my gosh, my life would look radically different than it does today. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't have had all of the amazing experiences or had any of the beautiful people in my life. There have been so many opportunities that have presented themselves because I made one decision. And so I love talking about that you're only one decision away from a completely different life. And that's what, to me, when you get the experience and, and you step out in faith and you make a big, a radical, what would be considered a radical decision, leaving something, quitting something, whatever, but then it works out in the long run, it gives you courage to step into the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. And like you said, that's when life starts to get to be pretty fun. You get to be in control and start making some decisions, which um, that's been my experience. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but that's been my experience. So yeah, that's super cool. I Absolutely. And really embracing that unshakable faith like knowing that the universe has your back, that God's watching over you, that you don't have anything to worry about and that it's all going to work out. When you really embrace that unshakable faith, it's almost like you're unstoppable. I think they said, if you knew who walked with you at all times, you would never experience fear in any shape or form. So I think that's pretty, pretty important, pretty powerful. Yeah, absolutely. So as we start to bring the, this one in for a close today, this has been a super fun conversation. I want to kind of put you on the spot. You've shared a ton of wisdom, folks. You need to go back, re-listen to this, share it with people that need to hear it. This has been a fantastic conversation of, of just stories of where we've been, where we're going, how we're getting there. If you can kind of put these uh, domino pieces in place and really start taking some action in your own life, you'll be very surprised at a relatively short period of time where you can go from where you are today to start bridging the gap into this dream life in the future. But as we begin to close, 
can you, I'm going to put you on the spot. Can you, you've shared a ton of wisdom, but can you come up with one more nugget of, of wisdom to share with the folks listening today? Just some inspiration. So let's say that they're bumping up against some of these beliefs, these negative thoughts, these negative, uh, the self-doubt, just the, what we're all dealing with. We all, we all have it, me included. Can you speak to that person? Give them some encouragement to help them take some action just today. It can be the smallest step, but that one step can lead to big things in the future. I think belief is going to be what bridges the gap between where you're at and where you want to be. Because even if you have the vision and you have, you have the desire, you have the vision, you know what you want. If you don't believe that you're worthy, if you don't believe that you're good enough, if you don't carry that self-love within you, there's always going to be that vibrational discrepancy. And the thing that you so long for is going to be just outside of your reach. And so that's why it's so important to really learn about these, really learn about these patterns, these unconscious patterns that are running your life. And so to be able to essentially transform your belief system and understand that you are worthy and that you are capable and really building a bigger concept of self, building your image. And when you do that, when you build a bigger image of yourself, what you're doing is you're transforming your identity. The thing that's so fascinating about identity is that we all have an identity that we're so attached to because you've been you for how many years? Well, we are where we are today because of every thought, every decision, every action that we've taken up until this point. Therefore, if we want uh, an, an incredibly different reality, if we want a beautiful future, if we want unprecedented, unprecedented success, we're going to have to start thinking different thoughts and making different, and making different decisions and taking different actions. And in order to do that, we're essentially going to have to transform our identity and become a totally different person. And that's why it's so important to have that awareness and to interrupt those patterns and to very intentionally rewire your subconscious mind so that way you can begin to transform your identity because we are all perfect. We were all made in God's image. We were meant to co-create. We are the powerful, magnificent creators of our own reality. And we can be, do, have anything we dream of. What the mind can conceive and believe it can achieve. So that is what I would love to leave you guys with today. Beautiful. That's awesome. So take a few minutes. You've mentioned about the Transformation Nation. We talked about the subconscious rewiring program that you have available. Tell everybody, where's the best place? They're like, yeah, I need to get Lucy on my team. She's like, she's got this figured out and I need to get on her team and I need to have her on my team and showing, having her show me the way. What are the best places for, for people to learn more about the programs that you have to offer and to learn more about where, uh, where they can find you? Yeah, so um, I'm so grateful that you asked, Brandy. So we have this 16-week program that rewires your subconscious mind and transforms your identity so that way people can start actually doing the things that they said they were going to do. It's really easy for us to set goals. It seems to be really difficult to follow through with them. So that's where we help people really upgrade the software that's running their lives. So um, we've taken the six-week training and we've condensed it down to a six part series that's only about two hours long that people can go ahead and download from our website. Now, normally this training, the six part series costs $1,000 if they go to our website to download it. However, we have created for your listeners a promo code. It's called Rich Mind. So if they go to ultimatesuccessblueprint.com, and type in promo code RICHMIND, they can get this free this training for free at absolutely no cost to them. And they can start implementing these tools, strategies, and techniques that's going, that they can start implementing today. That way they can start experiencing unconditional happiness and fulfillment tomorrow. So that's our gift to your listeners. That's fantastic. That's that's awesome. So folks go out there, Rich Mind, I assume all one word or two words, or does that matter? Yep. Rich mind all together um, as one word and uh, it's ultimate success blueprint.com. And if they want to find us on social um, it's Instagram coach Lucy Wynn and on Facebook it's Lucy's bubble. 
because it's important to fiercely protect your bubble and not let out external circumstances uh, shake your internal happiness. <laughs> Love that. And we'll have all these links in the show notes, folks. So don't be too concerned if you're trying to, if you're in a place where you can't write things down or if you're not in the exact place to take uh, immediate action. We'll have all these uh, links in the show notes where you can go and access and First off, thank you for offering that that gift to the guests here today. Uh, so folks, go out there, use that promo code RICHMIND uh, and get that program for free. That could be the very thing you need to get you st yourself started down this journey of a, of a future that, number one, you might not even realize that how beautiful it's actually going to be with all the chaos and all the stuff. I call it stuff. I, you can call it whatever you want, but I call it stuff. All the stuff that's going on out there that every, everybody's mad at this person and mad at that person and the world's coming to an end and all this stuff. When you realize all that, that doom and gloom. yeah, all that doom and gloom, when you realize that it's not necessarily the, the truth or it's not all truth, let's put it that way, that you actually are in control of your world and of your mind and of your decisions and your outcomes. That's when life really begins to be a lot of fun. That's been my experience. And it sounds like from this conversation with Lucy, that's been her experience as well. So go out there and get that program uh, with the promo code RICHMIND and uh, get started today. I highly encourage you to follow her on all the different social programs. And as I mentioned, we'll have those links in the show notes. So Lucy, I really appreciate your time today. I knew this was going to be a fun conversation and you, you outdid yourself. That was, it was a lot of fun. Oh, thank you, Randy. I had so much fun. Wishing everyone a blessed day. Absolutely. So folks, I hope you found value in this message. Uh, that's my goal here on the Rich Mind Podcast. I want to bring you the best guests that I could possibly find to help shed a different light on life, right? I understand that we're all dealing with, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, just stuff, right? We all have the chaos. We all have the, the crazy things going on in our minds and the way we think and the, who we are and the, and the uh, self-doubts and the, all the stuff, the stories. But I'm telling you, if I can do it and if Lucy can do it, we can all do it and we can do it together. And that's kind of the goal and the mission here on the Rich Mind Podcast. So I appreciate your time and your attention today. Uh, go out there, focus on being great. And I look forward to bringing back the next guest to you again very soon. Until then, bye now. Thank you for joining me on the Rich Mind Podcast. And remember, your external world is a reflection of what's going on inside of you. So focus every day on that internal battle and win within. Until next time, my friends.